Hey guys, day 20. Day 20 of our uh, Christmas Advent reading. Hope y'all have been in the Word already today. If you're not, then hey, uh, this will be our time being in the Word. Uh, today we're in Malachi, Malachi chapter 4, uh, verses 5 through 6. Uh, it'd be the 20th day of being in the Old Testament scriptures. Um, the 20th day to be in our Old Testament scriptures, looking at that proclamation of the one that's coming, the coming Messiah. So uh, today uh, we're going to read, and then as always, we'll read what the author has to say in our book called The Things Concerning Himself, uh, a Christmas Advent reading. So Malachi chapter 4, verses 5 through 6. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes, and he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. Uh, today we're going to talk about the uh, that there's another Elijah, uh, the ultimate cliffhanger. When I was growing up, this is the author speaking, and I would say the same as well. Uh, when I was growing up, there were several TV shows that our family would watch together. You younger readers might not understand this, but it used to be that there were only a couple of TV networks, and it seemed like everybody watched them. And there was no recording unless somehow you figured out how to program your VCR, and there was no binging. You knew when your show would come on and where, and you were home for it. The best shows were the ones that kept a continuous storyline going from week to week, and they would build up to the end of the season. For weeks, they would advertise the season finale, and you wouldn't and you couldn't miss it. Inevitably, at the end of the last show of the season, there would be a huge turn of events, and you would be left in suspense, not knowing how it would turn out. They had you. Now you'd have to wait until the next season before you could finally get the answer that you were looking for. So why are we talking about this? Well, there's a sense in which that is what God did to his people with the Old Testament. With the Old Test when the Old Testament ends, you have this amazing promise of God's restored kingdom. Our passage for today contains the last two sentences of the Old Testament. But so we understand the context, let's look at the verses that come right before this. The great day of the Lord it's important to remember that Malachi is writing to a group of Jews who had recently come back to their homeland. You see, God's people had turned away from God, so he sent foreign rulers to take them into captivity, but now they are returning. Look at the amazing message of hope that Malachi, Malachi gives to them. In Malachi chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, he says, For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all of the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble, they, that day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet." On the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts. That's some good stuff. This is a proclamation of victory for God and for his people. Those who do evil will be judged, and those who love the Lord will rejoice. It's a really beautiful picture. I can only imagine the joy and the hope that God's people would have received from this. It is truly great and awesome. But when was it supposed to happen? That's what's crazy. They don't know. God doesn't tell them when this is going to happen. Instead, he gives them a sign so that they will know when it does happen. That's where our text for today comes in. He tells them that Elijah, the prophet, is going to come and he will turn the hearts of God's people back to him, him being God. This is confusing for several reasons. First, Elijah has been gone for over 400 years. And secondly, these are the last recorded words in the Old Testament. After this, God stopped speaking to his people for 
400 years. All they know is that they need to be on the lookout for someone like Elijah. Elijah, take two. If you aren't super familiar with the Old Testament, the one thing you need to know about the OT prophets of the OT prophets is they were most definitely outliers. These were the guys that didn't care at all about social norms and cared only about being obedient to God. Sometimes you see them walking around half naked. Sometimes they lay on their side for over a year. Sometimes they build little dirt models of cities. One of these kids is doing his own thing. Who do you think this verse is describing? He wore a garment of hair with a belt of leather about his waist. You're probably thinking John the Baptist. Nope, this is Elijah in 2 Kings Chapter 1, verse 8, when John comes on the scene, he looks exactly like this because in reality, John is the last of the Old Testament prophets. Jesus even tells us that in Matthew chapter 11. So let's reflect. All of the Old Testament from the first book to the last book is all about Jesus. Love it. From the beginning, we saw that God promised a great serpent killer who would come to save us. Here in the last chapter, we see that God is still keeping his promise and he is sending one, one last prophet. When we look back on this through the lens of the gospel, it is so clear to us. John the Baptist lived like Elijah, preached like Elijah, even dressed like Elijah. When he came on the scene 2000 years ago, it was to prepare the way for Jesus. And as we continue to prepare ourselves for celebrating the birth of Jesus, we need to remember the message of John the Baptist. John was focused on turning the hearts of his hearers back to the God, uh, back to God the Father. They needed to repent. And we too, that should be our goal uh, all the time, each day, is that we should be willing to share and to spread the good news of Jesus Christ every day. They say this now, this was a couple years ago, nine out of 10 Christians, people that proclaim to know Christ, nine out of 10 will never share their faith verbally from the moment they're saved to the moment they die. Nine out of 10, y'all. Don't be that one. Be be the be the that that tenth person. Hey, you ready? That is daily looking for opportunities for you to share the good news. The good news is the only good news that anyone really needs, and that is the hope that is found in Jesus Christ. And so, hey, you ready? Let's take this Christmas season, but don't let it just be this Christmas season. Let it be every day that we go to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Have a great day.